Good morning. Welcome to the DroidCon Italy webinar. My name is Lucy James. I'm one of the DroidCon Italy organizers. Today, you'll be hearing from Barvik on state management in Flutter using MobX. Hello, Barvik. Hi, Lucy. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. We're very much looking forward to your webinar. Yeah. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. It's kind of a dream that come, comes true. I always wanted to talk at the droid cone. And no. uh, yeah, so it's kind of a dream. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're so welcome. You were telling us before that sharing and working on open source projects is real passion for you. And I'm glad that DroidCon is part of your story. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure. <laughs> this webinar is brought, by, brought to you by Synesthesia and it's powered by Accenture. So thank you again, Barvik, and have a great webinar. Yeah, thank you so much. Hello, folks. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and for joining Joint Current Italy webinar series. So in this talk, we will be talking about state management using MobX in Flutter. So before starting out, uh, uh, let me introduce myself once again. My name is Bhavik Mukwana. I'm from Ahmedabad, India. Uh, I, I'm a, uh, an associate Android developer, at least for 10 more days now. And I, I'm also uh, 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 developing application using Flutter since it was in alpha uh, and it's about to go in a beta version. So I'm yeah I'm that too old, and uh, yeah so that's it about me. I'm also of a Marvel enthusiast. So if you want to talk about Marvel stuff, then you can surely connect with me. And beside of that, if you want to connect with me, so uh, here is my Twitter handle. Uh, it's it's I by at I by Mukwana everywhere. So you can connect with me every everywhere using that this username. So let's get started. So state management is a kind of one of the hottest topics for everyone. Uh, we're talking about the not only the application but the, for the website and all other stuff. So it is kind of a really hottest topic for everyone, and there are so many options available. It's like it's kind of a you know there is a JavaScript framework for you know every everything. So there are so many options available, and it's really easy to get confused while picking up the best state management technique. So like what should you choose so in this talk mostly i will share my experience how i get into the mobx i'll share some code snippets and some code to uh, get familiar with you uh, mob, about mobx so before starting out about a state management uh, using a mobx uh, let's learn about what is actually a state so uh, uh, state state in my opinion state is a piece of information uh, you know that can be read and uh, when the widget is built in our case uh, flutter is, flutter is all about widgets so whenever the widget is built and might change during the lifetime of uh, that particular widget so uh, if uh, suppose there is a state uh, if you see this equation so if there is a state application state so whenever this changes it will call in uh, your build method and according to your and whenever that build method runs, your layout of the screen uh, on the screen will change. So this is my this is my uh, ideology for like how what is the state and uh, how the state works. And there are kind of I'm talking about the widgets. There are two types of widgets in Flutter: a stateless and a stateful widget. So one stateless widget is a dumb widget, and a stateful is a wise widget. Why dumb? Uh, why stateless is a dumb widget? Cause uh, it it doesn't know how to change its state uh, uh, automatically or uh, how uh, it doesn't know. So that's why it's a dumb widget and dumb widget and uh, again a stateful widget. So whenever you are you are calling and set state method, so it you can actually change the uh, particular widget, a particular state of the your state widget. Uh, in the stateful visit okay next it's uh, so you can as you know you can change the state of uh, widget using the stateful widget uh, but uh, like if if we have a uh, one parent that that we have one child the, uh, uh, parallelly and one one uh, uh, and let's say our child a child b and child c the, so there are kind of three child so you can actually change the state of particular child using particular one child using set state but if there are a say, scenario something like that 
uh, let's suppose there is a parent and there is a it has a two child child a and child b if you want to ch change the uh, state of the child a from the child b it is quietly uh, impossible to do it directly you have to pass the some data using a constructor like like you have to inject it every time and uh, so it's a kind of a drawback it is a bit easy if if you have a, only two childs but if you have a, uh, a too many childs if you have a nested tree of widgets uh, so it's quite difficult to do so so to avoid that uh, uh, we have some solutions like inherited widget was really popular when the photo creator came inherited model was, was also pro very popular and then came the provider and it's kind of similar to the scope model it's not a scope model uh, but it's kind of similar to it so provider has been the uh, introduced in the io19 uh, i guess yeah it was in io19 when the provider has been uh, introduced to us like from the google team itself so i have tried the provider too and i, ha I haven't felt that connection with the with my code and my ui that uh, I don't have any uh, kind of grudges or kind of any any kind of kind of thing, but uh, it just I didn't I didn't feel any kind of connection. So then I I I, I, uh, I certainly certainly don't want to uh, go for a redux. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, maybe it was a, a more boilerplate code probably. Then I have tried the block. Uh, I have tried the block uh, be before the blo uh, Flutter block package comes uh, comes up. Uh, so it 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 was all about streams and uh, observables uh, and uh, uh, stream builder and all other stuff. So I have start I've started using that, but I was I was thinking that I'm writing too much code, uh, and uh, at at like. Uh, and I was uh, thinking that uh, I, I cannot write. You know, actually. Uh, this much of code and it wasn't being productive. I, I'm, I'm no, I wasn't being so much productive uh, at that time. So I, I was really baffled. Like, what should I do? Actually, uh, I really don't know what what state management should I try. And uh, it's uh, as I wasn't feeling, you know, connection between like code and me myself. So. And at that time, like a one and a half year ago, I I was got to know about Mobex. Uh, I it was uh, a Pawn Podila tweet. A Pawn Podila, uh, he's uh, he actually made a port of the Mobex from the JavaScript. So Mobex has been a very effective library for the JavaScript, and this port uh, to the large language aims to bring the same level of productivity. And it has been created by Pawn Podila. Uh, uh, Pawn Podila and uh, Demi Assault. Uh, 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 there are like big names who actually contribute to the, contribute to this uh, library. Uh, it is uh, 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 state management technique. So why I have choose the Mobex? So Mobex is simple to connect the reactive data of your application with the UI. So it's 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 kind of a observable. You define some variable as a observable, and at the side of UI you bind it with the reaction or should I say observer. And bind it with the uh, that particular reaction, and it it works very natural and very it feels really automatic. You just you just not don't have to do anything extra. You just create some variable and make it uh, observable. And at the UI side, use a observer or a, should I say a reaction, and uh, just uh, when whenever you change your observable or your or your variable changes, it automatically rerun your uh, UI and rebuild your UI. So it's quite a natural thing for me. It's quite automatic. So I actually become fond of it and started use, using it. So what's the concept of the uh, this Mobex thing? Uh, so at the heart of the Mobex, there are three important concepts in the Mobex. So one is observables, one is action, and the last one is reaction. Okay. So it's, uh, if if we, uh, let's let me explain this chart. So observable. Uh, let's talk. Start from the actions. So we have some actions. Like I'm doing something, and it mutates some variables, and uh, uh, it changes the observable. Uh, it, like our variable is observable. So whenever this is a variable or our, our observable changes, it notify our reactions. That reactions will uh, uh, will have some side effects. Suppose your UI will change. 
if you are showing some kind of a snack bar or uh, you're going to go another screen or you're doing you are starting some animation or kind of stuff so that that's that is a kind of side effects beside of that your reaction may, may fire some actions if you want to do some another if you want to run some other action using that reaction so you can do so it's it's a kind of a loop if you want to make it so it's a kind of a loop so let's talk about observables so observe observable they represent the reactive state of your application they can be simple scalars to complex object tree so by defining your particular variable like if i have defined my uh, counter variable as observable and in i have set the initial value to the zero so i'm defining my uh, the particular counter variable as zero so whenever and, and i need to bind it with the our uh, you know widget tree and i i need to bind it with our ui so whenever this uh, counter uh, counter widget uh, variable will change it automatically update the uh, it automatically update our ui so uh, let me like if i if i say whenever the observable changes it will expose to the reactive state of tree uh, that the ui consume so this is how the uh, counter uh, like class or custo uh, should i say stores look like so mobex will have a stores uh, and uh, and that store will contain almost every uh, logic you will write, go, going to write in your application so suppose we uh, we have a like, like we have a default application when we create a fl one flutter application we have a counter application inbuilt in uh, of uh, in our code okay so we have uh, one counter store over here so a class counter it has a constructor before and we are passing we are assigning an increment is equal to action in this uh, counter uh, counter store so uh, whenever this uh, action going to fire in this in the last you can see that there is the increment method over here it what it does it's actually and there is also variable called value is equal to observable zero that's the initial value will be a zero and whenever this value uh, increment method will call it will uh, uh, so it, it will increment the value of particular that counter and in to uh, to the plus 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 that is by one two three and more and more so this is the way you can actually write your store but it does looks a boilerplate code again so to avoid that uh mobix also has a mobix code generation that uh, that will rescue you and there will be a lesser of boilerplate code to write so this is the code will look like after using a mobex code gen package okay so here is a like first line is you are going to import a mobex.dart uh, package then there is a part file in that is na a name as the counter counter.g.dart so this is the file where your generator code will go so whatever the code mobex generates it will go over in this file counter.g.dart file you can na name it anything uh, if you want to name it a counter.a.dart file you can name it but g.dart makes more sense as it is a generator file then there is a class is a counter is equal to counter base now is equal to is the extends uh, for the for the dart so you can simplify the, uh, simplify with the uh, extend with the is equal to and then there is a width underscore dollar counter is it is our mixing that will come from the counter.g.dart file then there is our abstract class that has a counter base with our store mixing and now we are using a um, at observable uh, annotation from the mobix code in the package and we are defining our integer value a variable as a observable so it automatically becomes a observable and there and the very below we have one action uh, that is increment so whenever the increment method will call it will update the value of uh, particular our observable name value okay so again you see there are some boilerplate code like uh, you have to write part counter dot g dot dart for every class like uh, part some some class dot g dot dart file and uh, this class counter is equal to counter base with so this line you have to write uh, every time but it is fixed for the uh, you know in almost every store 
so you can neglect it and i will show you uh, i'll also show you how we can how we can actually create a lab uh, i also i have also created a lab template for android studio so you can just write some store uh, one line and the, this boilerplate code, code will be there so there will be again a less boilerplate code so yeah that's it yeah so so here uh understand to mark observable property of the class yes the, uh, and as i said there is a boilerplate code over here but uh, it is fixed for every class let's can go next then there is a also one type of uh, uh one more observable is there a computed observable so we have one uh, example over here a first name last name and a full name okay and the state of your application uh, actually there are uh, you know um, uh, two kind of state available uh, in our you, you can say that uh, in a flutter a core state uh, it's uh, uh, it's actually there for every ui or every uh, techniques that has a state uh, so it's kind of a core state and a derived state and what i mean is a core state is like it uh, the core state is a state inherent to domain you are you are dealing with uh, like uh, for example our in our in in our in in this code uh, we have if if you have a uh, some suppose one entity called contact it has a two way two strings like first name and last name so it's a it's a core state for the contact okay however our full name is a derived state it is it is obtained by combining first name and last name so what will happen with the computer value so if we change the first name or last name any any one of them so it will automatically change the full name uh, so you don't have to do anything extra you just define like uh, we have like written over here first name comma last name so any of the say, one variable first name or last name will change it will automatically reflect full name to the full name and if you if you have uh, if you are using uh, binding it with the uh, your ui so you are your ui going to uh, you know build automatically once again so you you don't have to do anything so it's again as i'm as i've told earlier it's automatic then there is the actions so actions are have you muted the observables uh, you know rather than mut mutating them uh, directly uh, what i mean directly is you can directly call uh, you know from uh, from using uh, any method you can directly you uh, increment the value of the counter counter dot value plus plus but beside of do, doing that you uh, we should use actions so actions add a semantic meaning to the mutations uh, for example instead of just doing as i said instead of just doing value plus plus for a counter value firing an increment action carries a more meaning like yeah we are doing some increment uh, of incrementations beside that actions also batch up all the notifications that ensure the changes are notified only after the complete uh, what i mean is uh, whenever this observe uh, observer value is going to is changed only after that action uh, action will notify to our like uh, observable yeah you can change the ui or you can do any uh, you can do anything you want to do like we if we if we have a if we have bind it with the ui so yeah thus the observer no, are notified only upon the atomic completion of the action action can also be a nested one in this case the if the notification go out when the topmost action has been completed completed so if we have a one action in in the and like in in that action we also have a other action okay so if the first action is a, the parent action is a, a completed uh, then it will notify to the parent action to do their stuff and child action can go go further so as i've shown earlier this is what our class our store will look like uh, for our basic counter application and there is a one last thing called reactions so as i showed you a diagram earlier it is uh, the, the mobex is uh, tired of uh, uh, action observable and reactions so reactions complete the mobex triad okay so they are the observers observers of the, of the reactive system and and it get notified whenever an observer observable the track is changed and in in above uh, in this our example we have a string greeting is equal to observable hello world 
So we have created a greeting string that has a that is a observable for us, and it has a one string called hello world. Now we have one type of uh, reaction over here that is the auto run. So it is going to run automatically and track all the observables without explicit, explicit uh, wiring. Uh, you don't have to do anything. So in this, we are printing a greeting dot value. So and then we are changing a greeting greeting dot value is equal to hello mobex. So when we do do so, it will firstly print the hello world. And then we are actually uh, changing the greeting dot value to the hello mobx. So it will again change to the hello mobx. So you don't have to do anything. Um, uh, that's it. And uh, uh, that's uh, that's the only three thing you need to take care of and uh, with the mobx and uh, you're good to go. And at the last, whenever you don't need uh, reactions, you have to, you know, you should actually dispose it. Uh, whenever you are done with these reactions. So in this line, we are also dis disposing of our auto run uh, reaction. Uh, next one. So like enough of code. Uh, I'm, 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 I think I'm widely you know, uh, uh, known for my live coding sessions. Uh, so I would like to show my code uh, for the Mobix, how I actually use it. So currently we have, we have a one application over here. Uh, it's, it currently contains a uh, one tax, uh, one column. It has a tax called simple counter app and one hard coded tax as a one. And also we have a floating XM button that do does nothing as of now. Okay. So this is one of my uh, open source project. If you want to check out you know, from my GitHub uh, repository, you can, uh, you can uh, surely check it out. Okay, so I'm going to create a one uh, store over here in this package. I'm going to name it a counter. I'm simply just going to copy it. Now, I have told you about the live template thing. So I'm just going to write store over here. I have, this live template has been created by me. You can actually create in uh, in your Android Studio or in the VS Code. So Clicking on that, you will get the almost uh, boil up, uh, every boilerplate fold you have. You may have, you have to write again and again. So I'm going to paste counter over here. Then our class name counter, and that's it. Now we are seeing some red lines error over here. Okay, so it is because our counter .g .dar file has not been generated yet. So we are going to generate that uh, counter .g .dar file. So for that we need to write a command called flutter package is pub run build runner and build so it will uh, run our build run and it will run our mobile code gen to create and then it will create this counter.g.dart file so it does take some time if you have uh, don't have a good system or if you are running your android studio or you know your application using a 4 gb of ram so it might take some time. Okay. Meanwhile, I can code. Uh, okay, we have also it. Sometimes it uh, also throws uh, an error. Like I, I already have some store over here uh, that has been created already. So it has been conflicting with the previous store. So you can actually just co copy this line. It also comes with the solution. So delete conflict conflicting outputs. So it will automatically delete the conflicting output outputs and create a new one. So our, our mobile code gen will be created. Meanwhile, I can actually you know uh, start writing my code. So I'm going to create an observable. I'm gonna name it into the value. Let's name it a uh, count counting state. It's a default value as zero. Now going to use one action and uh, just name it uh, increment again. Okay. This count uh, I'm I'm just going to use count plus plus. And yeah, that's it. If we can see, 
our the, the uh, flutter command has been run successfully and we have some success success output uh, eight outputs okay so our counter load z dot dart file over here is generated you can see this is generated file it currently does not have anything as i have started writing this code afterwards so i, I need to write to you know that command again to do not so like if you if you don't want to write again and again you are you know build enough uh, class you can simply use a watch instead of build but yeah it does takes your cpu uh, uh, you know uh, clock um, uh, more so I, I generally don't prefer it so i'm going to build uh, my build runner again and it will take a lesser time before uh, before instead of first time uh, so it will gonna take a much time for the first first time. okay so now we have like a one counter atom so mostly uh, you don't have to do anything over here okay so this is our counter variable and this is our actions and at the last we have a dot script dot to string method okay so as it says do not modify it by hand certainly certainly i do modify it uh, if there are minor changes i want to do so yeah so this is our uh, counter class will look like now in the main file let me just uh, rerun it rerun my application again so as it counter uh, clicking on that plus button it does nothing okay now we are going to bind our u that count uh, count variable observable with our ui to do so what we need to do is we need to, we, we have the mobex comes with a widget called observer okay. it accepts a builder and a context over here as we are not going to use a context as of now i will just simply use a underscore instead okay now i have to you know create a one num and see over here i'm using a stateless widget as of now now we, i need to uh, you know create a, a instance of this counter over here so counter is equal to our counter store okay now we have a instance uh, of the counter store over here i'm going to use counter dot count value over here so you can see we have a zero value from the counter but count store okay as i have set the value of count as initially for as a zero but still it doesn't do anything it doesn't implement the counter as i haven't set anything over here so again i need to use the counter in instance and then i need to use implement method over here I'm just gonna hear how to load our my application and then clicking on this action floating action button it will increment my counter and it, it is so simple so i have talked about the reaction earlier so observer is a wrapper of uh, reactions that you can actually use as a widget so yeah th uh, that's it from the you know uh, counter for uh, counter project but uh, meanwhile like doing a like you know doing a, like final counter is equal to counter like doing the this kind of uh, initializer some for your counter application you can instead use a provider provider if you want to you know inject your store within the v so you can actually use a provider so i'm going to use provider over here i'm going to create create my store over here okay. using the provider i will get my store so final store going to give a type of the store so we can identify which it is which store we are using and as 
I'm just going to change the name. I'm gonna rerun it. So you can see my value of the counter is again zero. I'm gonna increment it. Yeah, it is successfully incrementing the counter value. So this is how we actually use provider to inject the store and uh, uh, you can get it using the provider provider uh, only and uh, it's that simple so this is how the counter application looks like beside of that i also have a one theme store that is uh, uh, like creative uh, the application this uh, this code is open source as um flutter mobix boilerplate code in my github uh, account so in this theme store, what I'm doing, I'm changing the theme mode, like I'm switching a theme using, and I'm assigning a new theme mode. And uh, so whenever this theme mode change, it uh, uh, changes the theme of my application. So let me show it to you. I'm just gonna roll back to my previous commit. I'm going to rerun it. So this code also has a, uh, uh, you know, fake login account, uh, fake login too. So if you want to use that, uh, you know, for your authentication part, if you want to use at any other places, like if you want to call an API, so you can do so. Right now, right now I'm not have, I don't have an internet connection in my mobile, so we are not getting anything. But let me change this uh, theme over here. So currently it is a light. If I change it to dark, it will change it to the dark for the whole application. And I can actually log out from the system. And let me show how the authentication work. works. I also implemented, a, you know, a, a error, errors and how you can actually validate your fields using a store only. So this code, this code contains almost everything. So currently, it's a fake login, so you can pass on every, anything. Now it will, uh, it, it it also has some, you know. A uh, fake loader and kind of stuff, and and it's calling an actual API, a dummy API uh, that, that will get me uh, some data, and it is coming from the API only. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. So this is actually me. I love to code doing live. I love to co co coding live. Yeah. So that's it from my end. Uh, Th thank you so much for you know bearing me or uh, heard, hearing me uh, that's it from my end if you have any kind of question you can uh, uh, ask in the comment section of uh, this live and I'll, as I'll answer you straight away yeah thank you so much thank you Babi. thank you very much for this wonderful webinar so Babik will be taking questions shortly I'd like to once again thank our sponsor, Accenture, and we'd like to know that our next webinar will be the 15th of September. Hope to see you there. Back to you, Bavik, for question. And uh, right now, we have, uh, okay, we have uh, no question. Yeah. <laughs> Only Sunday that is late, and we can give one minute to everyone to write down his question on youtube comments yeah beside of that if, if anyone has a question so they can ping me on twitter or uh, linkedin yeah i am mostly active on a twitter uh, so yeah sunny prasad has a question reactions are mysterious do you think reactions have a huge time complexity oh uh, i don't think so uh, and yeah it they are uh, mysterious like uh, i i actually don't know what's actually running inside in inside the reaction but uh, yeah uh, it is mysterious and yeah i don't know i, I don't think that it has a time complexity probably yeah. it runs uh, really well if you if you if you are going to write your code clean so yeah Okay, Bilju has a question. If we use a nested observer, then when parent observer is, observer is rebuilt, what happens to the child observer? Okay, so again, I have earlier told about the actions, nested actions. Uh, 
like uh, it will know it will have no effect in the child observer uh, it will only going to uh, rebuild your you know parent observer but you have to take care of your how you are actually uh, you know uh, creating your widgets like if you are uh, if you are not using the you know separate classes uh, separate widgets for your ui so it um, it might affect your uh, you know a child observer too so you have to take care of your how actually how you are actually you know dividing your uh, widgets too so you have to take care take care of that thing too i hope what will do it's answer your questions let's wait on another while thank you bavik maybe there is a Another question, we will close in uh, one minute. Yeah, okay. So if anyone has a question, you can ping me on uh, Twitter. Uh, actually, my handle name is I Bhavik Mukwana. It's everywhere. Uh, thank you so much, Rumil. Okay, so we have one question. So if the state for the child widget does not change, then it will not affect the performance, right? Okay. Uh, I, I highly believe that, uh, like, you know, if if we have a, like any kind of performance issue, uh, if you are not using, like uh, writing your, you know, really good code, uh, and if the, your widget is not rebuilding, it will not, it never gonna affect your code. Uh, it, it, it will never gonna affect your perf app perf performance in my opinion as it is not rebuilding why it is uh, uh, it will affect your performance application performance so thanks again thanks again uh bavik so hope to see you maybe in the next live drivecon next year and uh, have a great time. Thank you, Bavik. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much, Francisco. Thank you to Lucy too. Thank you, Bavik. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys.